Yeah, that's really tough. Hmm. Oh, it's just it's kind of helpful though, because the uh, manual has like special mm -hmm. topics. So, Greg, you just talked about all those. I talked about all my graphs and the little paragraph, and I realized that the lab manual had discussion topics, and I have to go back and talk about those. Start to so you see the way it's when when left take for corners or left. Today will be very boring. For me. No, 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 nothing exciting for myself, but we we should go over. Uh, some <coughs> some boring stuff, and it's especially boring because you have partially made it in your homework. But we need to to, to have it here. So, uh, we are in peak and class. We promise everyone to describe all the of uh, characterization in instruments, but instead we do linear algebra and quantum theory. Right now we are applying our skills in quantum theory uh, to to uh, particle in the box, which may model uh, oligomers of conjugated polymers or thin films of self adapters. Uh, there are three sections uh, eigen states, eigen energies, prediction of the future, and uh, multi dimensional boxes in three dimension. We are on the first section of eigen states and eigen energies. And, uh, you already know what are the energies and how orbitals look like, but we need to slowly but surely go once again through where they are coming from. Um, like normalization and, and stuff. We are here. Um, who, who is a homework which I have to send the, the script that we will practice it today? Do uh, um, This will be fun and it will be really preparation to predict the future. It will be really quick, so probably the quick step. The second part of the homework, which is due next Friday, not coming, but next, it will be a little, it will, it will be again not that waste. And <coughs> I have high expectations that you will like to be exciting in the uh, previous year, uh, mainly at the least perspective. So, in order to play fun stuff, with uh, quantum theory and with predicting future <coughs> and outcomes of the measurements of observables, when always, uh, well, most cases, one needs to start uh, from what? From solving which Schrodinger equation? Which is lower level? Independent. Yes, so we need to solve independent. If we have a box, it means uh, we can <coughs> out of the box. There are infinite walls. And you have size size of the box. Um, these um, kinetic energy. So we always need to write down Hamiltonian energy because if you what comes to the, the time and dimension equation, which we need to solve. Hamiltonian includes kinetic and potential energy. Kinetic is always uh, is one dimension second derivative over position, and potential will be zero, the same as in the free space inside the box and it will be infinite outside of the, <coughs> uh, the independent coordinate is smaller than left edge or higher than right edge. So um, the solution of such problem in some sort is trivial and in some sort special. Trivial is that inside the box we have uh, the problem is uh, identical to free space where the solutions are just plane waves, right? Exponentials with accumulating phases, right? Uh, 
as something moves, it accumulates phases and something uh, changes. Um, but outside of the box, there is no way function at all. So uh, this is a standard practice in uh, differential equations setting up boundary conditions. So at the left and right edges, the way function is mandated to be zero. It's mandated to be zero further away from edges, but <coughs> we don't care. Edges is, uh, are sufficient. So um, it is a reasonable approach to assume that the way function has a uh, standard shape as we always uh, were philosophically discussing. So this uh, exponential is imaginary power, where in power something linearly accumulates as we progress in space or as we progress in time. Right? So we do not have time, it's time independent, so we have something progresses in space with some great key. And the plane wave can go left and right. We do not have any specific telling where it will go, so we need to generally assume there is a position Traveling with going left, traveling with going right. And uh, you do not know in which proportions they are entering into the solution. Therefore, we have three independents. Location in front of C E plus C plus, location in front of E minus C minus, and unknown uh, rate of accumulating phase, which we call wave factor. Yes? Is the K going to be equal on both of those? Yes. Okay. Uh, Generally, if, if, if we want to be ridiculously rigorous, we need to make summation of plane waves with all possible values of k, like putting the <coughs> c sub p into the power of time. KZDK. But uh, from the, um, while telling the story, I know the solution, you already know the solution. And you know that it is the shortest way. If you have from this integral, which includes summation of all possible K with positive and negative, those which are symmetric when it is uh, positive and negative, we expect that they will uh, exhibit constructive or destructive interference in a positive sense that will help us to find solutions. So it's kind of, this is more general and this is made up for simplicity based on our, because we're not starting to solve this problem in fact right now. No, we are a little bit exposed to what we perceive. You know that when um, traveling waves meet each other, they form standing wave. A standing wave will form if they get the same case. So we kind of making a setup to get us anyway. Okay. Well, um, if we plug in this solution as, as we were doing in plane wave into uh, eigen value problem into time independent unit equation, we will obtain that energy will be square of this wave vector. We do not know yet which <coughs> wave vectors are allowed and permitted, but this is kind of standard. We'll take the uh, just plug it in this functional form into uh, Did you watch, uh, uh, any, anyone watched historical movies from uh, eastern part of the world? Korean or Japanese? Uh, okay, so uh, they uh, were uh, some historical uh, outfit with very uh, crazy sleeves. Therefore, if, if they write or just tell something, they... they and I was just... Okay. So, generally, the solution is superposition of this stuff, and we are um, taking help from our um, best friend Euler, who tells that uh, 
But those guys do not fear of imaginary exponentials. They always can be replaced to trigonometric sines and cosines, right? So the this one is uh, replaced by Oliver here, and is negative. We just spoke the sign in, in uh, front. Flip the sign in front of the sign. <coughs> Right? And then we can reorder uh, terms, reform four terms, and we can group them. So a sign goes here and there, and then we have summation of the expansion coefficients, and uh, imaginary sign goes uh, here and there. And then uh, unknown coefficients are subtracted. So um, we do a complicated <coughs> guess for the functional form of the solution. So, uh, and at this point, we already kind of assume that uh, traveling waves are already converted into standard waves, right? with slopes and nodes. We just do not know at which proportion they come to what are these uh, expansion coefficients. So, in order to find unknown wave vector, unknown C plus and unknown C minus, we are plugging in this uh, functional form into generally into, into the equation that we solved. But right now our equation is like split onto two lines. First is actual Schrodinger equation, second is just set of boundary conditions, so which we need to match. So we need to select such C plus C minus and K, which will match boundary conditions. So uh, boundary conditions, which mean you plug in the uh, Z equal zero or Z equal uh, L, the either left or right edges of the box. So if you have <coughs> more left edge of the box, a sign turns into one sign turns into zero, um, and we request that this stuff is equal to zero. So since this term is zero, you cannot tell anything definite about the subtraction. But since uh, this one is one, and it needs to be equal, <coughs> it, we get an equation for connection between C plus and C minus. This is zero, and this C plus plus C minus equals zero, right? No objection, which means they are uh, of the same uh, amplitude and opposite sign. Right? Yeah. Same amplitude, magnitude. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And opposite sign. Amplitude is not good. Whatever. Okay. I I don't care. I'm I'm not. Uh, I'll do it. So wherever we have uh, C minus, we can replace it by C plus minus C plus, right? So we do not need to follow two of them. We can use only, only one of them since they are uh, not independent. Now we need to go to the uh, left and right bound. So we already discarded cosine. We already uh, can replace. Uh, we, we probably skip the step. So it was in front of sine. It was c plus minus c minus. But c. What? And uh, we can replace it to C plus minus C plus minus minus C plus, right? So therefore, this one converts into two C plus. C plus is uh, unknown expansion coefficients in our equation, and in this context, it's not the name of the problem or language. Um, 
how do we match this equation? So, in fact, I was not intentional the way, and I just forgotten to bring up that we need to satisfy several things. We need to satisfy Schrodinger equation with uh, kinetic energy or worth from we are getting this uh, oscillating exponentials. First thing. Second, we need to match boundary conditions, and uh, the third, we need to keep uh, sanity of our brains, which means uh, wave functions have to be normalized. If you uh, we interpret wave function as a wave function square as probability distribution. And if you have one electron, integral from plus to minus infinity should give one, because you have another one electron. So uh, we will need to look uh, to match boundary condition first, and second, we will need to match the <coughs> normalization. So sine equals zero when argument is uh, proportional to pi multiplied by integer number. No objections. KL must be integer number. And it gives the, uh, if you divide both sides by left and right by L, it gives the values of K. So this boundary condition will be correct only if wave vector K takes uh, discrete nature of numbers multiplied by, by this factor, pi over L. It means uh, if, if you uh, interpret K as something related to the momentum, it means that uh, it is uh, traffic signs permitting only a discrete set of velocities. You cannot continue to accelerate, you can just write this specific values. So we, we know everything except C plus. So our wave function, which is almost ready, will be this sine k is replaced by pi n over l times independent variable. And then we need to uh, take care of this uh, c plus. Once again, if we uh, plug in the value of k into uh, expression of energy for, for kinetic energy, and inside the box we have only kinetic energy. This curve over here. Uh, we will see that it will be discrete energies, uh, which values are equal to com combination of constants times square of the integer number. So their offset will increase. First they will be dense, and then they will be sparser and sparser. And uh, it's interesting that uh, these energies are inversely proportional to the size of the box. So if you make that, if you squeeze the box, make it smaller, energies and their offsets become larger. So, um, stay alert if you are watching and uh, prepare to find mistakes. Uh, there could be some. So, this is almost a ready solution. You just need this uh, C plus. And uh, our requirement is the product of these wave functions. Um, generally, philosophically, it should be from minus infinity to plus infinity. But you know that uh, wherever independent variable z is uh, less than zero or bigger than uh, L capital, wave function is zero. Therefore, we can skip this integration. If we perform it only from zero to L capital. And uh, we mandate that uh, it should be equal one because uh, we work only with one error. Total probability that this electron does exist and we have it somewhere is one. It can be smaller or higher or lower probability at certain places, but total or whole space it is one. So we uh, just take 
this function conjugate in this function itself, multiply it, and perform this integration. So the sign doesn't have imaginary parts, so we have just twice sign times sign of this algorithm. And the um, factor here, once it is with i, and other times due to conjugation, we are uh, putting star here and putting minus i to the front. i times i is minus 1, minus times minus will be plus. How do you take this integral? Uh, you already. I need to distribute back your works, but you already know that the grades are not prepared. But uh, since you completed the previous homework and uh, got good grades, you have an idea how to take this integral. You are taking. So, integral. T z of sine square of uh, some constants uh, at z. Any, any ideas? T change c z to a new variable and then change the system, change the integration to a new variable. But do you know what is integral of sine square? <coughs> and uh, do, do you need to know? No, I can probably not do that. Minus cosine squared? Yes, yes. So uh, it's the idea is that we re transform ev everything to very, very basic, simple uh, integrals that, that ev everyone can take. So if you would have sine or cosine, we know how to integrate, right? So why don't we convert the sine square into cosine? Since uh, Bill suggested such a question does exist. And um, if you do not believe this equation, um, one can always re redirect. I, I, I remember that I was tortured in, in high school by to memorize trigonometric tri tri equations. And I was not able to memorize them, but I just uh, accepted the fact that they existed. One can always find the right. Um, if, if you practice Euler um, equation for e to the power 2 alpha, i to alpha. You don't need to write it. It's uh, assumable that t to the power is uh, e to the power alpha i alpha times e to the power i alpha. Right? And you uh, convert it into over at the left and at the right. You get a sine double argument, sine double argument, a sine plus i sine single argument, a sine i sine uh, single argument. And then you open the brackets and see that for a real part it will be a sine cosine and a sine sine. And here real part will be cosine. And you know the um, if you add together a sine square plus sine square, it will be equal to Yes. So if you get the equation of circles, the ball circle, okay. it will be the equation of circle is uh, very fun. If you subtract these two equations, you get one minus the same double argument equals two sine of single argument. Not two, not two. And just <coughs> and therefore, any time we see sine of a single arguments uh, score, we can replace it by 1 minus sine of double argument. And it will be a little easier to take this problem. Divide both parts by the Good. So we are taking this integral, and um, B 
we can split it into two integrals. Once we integrate just one from zero to L dz, right? What will be the answer for, for the session to go? No. Good. Thank you. And uh, second, we need to apply integration to the sign of this uh, double argument. And we can kind of guess what will be the answer graphically, by the way. So if uh, the black line here is um, a sign of regular argument, so by going from uh, 0 to L, it covers half period. And if you double argument, it makes the full period. And you need the integra uh, integrate this purple line, which is likely to be uh, plus here, plus here, minus there, compensate each other and, and gives you. So we intuitively, we expect that the second integral will be 0, but we may want to double check just in case. But uh, if we are um, naive in a good sense and uh, lazy in a good sense, we can go from here and take the answer. It will be like 1 equals 4 c plus times l squared times l. <coughs> but if we are picky, let's double check that this could be very soon. Dimitri. Yes. On the last slide, you forgot to divide your form up, up by the constants by 2. Huh? The, the do, I, do I need to divide it or I don't? Oh, because you're multiplying with your constants. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. Uh, previous years, I didn't divide by 2. And this year, I decided that on the previous slide, you have this divided by 2, and you need to plug it in here. But then uh, I'm not happy with that. I was preparing the last hour for the meeting. Uh, so if you find, do we need to divide by two? We need to skip it. I would appreciate and assign extra credit to the uh, final. So this divide by two is question. OK? But uh, I'm very confident in the the rest of uh, derivations and, and conclusions. So do not, I invite you to find little mistakes, but uh, uh, do not doubt main uh, message. Okay. So if you want to take this integral, um, it's boring to have the complicated uh, independent argument. It would be more reasonable to replace it by a new variable. But to replace uh, this argument just by letter y. And then in order to identify the same letter y as our uh, integration variable, we may multiply our integration variable by missing factors, then divide by the uh, inverse of such factor so that we do not change the expression. And from this operation, our the event variable will be um, um, 2 pi natural number divided by L times independent variable. And if we play this game, then our integral will be just integral of the sign y to y, right? And as a penalty for this change of variables, we'll have the, uh, the inverse of this stuff. So L divided by 2 pi. And Alex already took this. The first one. Integral of 1 from 0 to L will be L. You can pull the same common factor uh, outside of, of the vectors. So, what is the integral of cosine? We all know that it will be sine of plus or minus. Integral of cosine. So, how do you decide? Positive and negative. Throw a dice and look at some uh, uh, 
scientific world. So called. No, no, never remember things. It's very dangerous if you may play a game with you. No, <coughs> and especially if you're challenged to answer some question, better to redirect and uh, try to reconstruct logical connections. Because memory, like closing eyes and trying to flip pages in the memory, doesn't help. It, you, you may uh, make mistakes and, and uh, waste uh, time. So assign uh, graphical. Assign is positive near the uh, zero. And if you integrate, it means area under, under the uh, curve. So if we start integrate from uh, lower limit is zero, if you start integrating, initially it is not start with zero. And then as we go forward, the column for this area, it will grow. Right? So, well, and then we know that it is a sign. But definitely, <coughs> the result of integration near zero and in positive sign will be, will be positive. It's the plus sign there in the minus. And then we need values of this y, of this new variable y at the upper and lower limit. So when uh, x equals zero, y equals zero, and uh, if x equals L, we cancel our uh, y variable was z, was z divided by L. And if, f, uh, if z equals L, it cancels, and you have y at the upper limit is 2 pi n. And then our integral results into this. So the factor L traveled outside of the bracket. Here is the remaining piece of the uh, uh, integration factor. And here is uh, the result of integration at the upper limit and lower limit, which we need to subtract. <coughs> okay. At lower, it is sine of 0, which is 0. At upper, it's sine of 2 pi n, which is mm -hmm. 0. Good. So we do not have this term. So we have just uh, L. And, um, I'm curious if divided by two should be kept here. Last year, I didn't have it, and I was happy. Um, okay, so we mandate that uh, norm, norm must be equal to one. Because we have one neutron is probability 100%. So we divide the uh, product of this expansion coefficients by 4L. And uh, I'm curious, but uh, we will check it out. And then we can. Um, Bring a new variable, which will be imaginary unit times uh, real constant C. Then this um, product of um, conjugated coefficient, coefficient itself will be just uh, C squared. <coughs> Here I'm in doubt. What would you? And then we take uh, square root, which will be uh, 1 divided by <coughs> 2L. And uh, if you bring back this change of variables, it will be imaginary unit divided by square root of, of L. So, our original trial function was uh, sine with discrete accumulation factor in front of independent variable with unknown uh, C plus expansion coefficient. Now we do know value of this expansion coefficient. It is imaginary and it is inversely proportional to the 
square root of the size of the box. So if you plug it in, the i times i will be minus 1, and minus with another minus will uh, cancel, cancel each other. So uh, the factors 2 should cancel here. And uh, then the uh, wave function itself will be the square root of 1 over L times, times this sign. Objections? Protest? Uh, suggestions of uh, uh, any found errors? If you don't find it right now, but find it later, please email. I, I would appreciate it. So, I was borrowing time from you many times, but now I'm giving you uh, 13 minutes back. <laughs> Meeting is done. Wave, uh, wave function is uh, sine of uh, <coughs> pi n divided by L divided multiplied by z with uh, factor one, one of the square root of L, and energies are just quadratic. <coughs> the next thing to do will be predicting the future, practicing combinations of these wave functions with time and accumulating things, match initial conditions, and see how it propagates forward in time. So did you did you not divide it by two because it make when you get to the final wave function it makes the factors cancel out instead of having to have a four divided by the square root of two? If, if I keep this divided by two, it will be one uh, square root of one divided by two uh, and uh, if I follow this uh, Yeah, and, and that's a little harder to work with. It's not harder. Uh, I just need to double check in uh, in peace later. But I don't know, maybe I don't know who, who maybe you, maybe I uh, who has more free time to see the piece and check things. <laughs> maybe you have less uh, free time. Because of, uh, I know that some people take like up to 19 credits per semester, which is like you are. Hope no one, it's no one of you that you stay to a smaller number. So, meeting is dismissed. Looking forward to see you uh, Wednesday night at 5 p.m. TVV uh, on the So, why so many?